Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to the Friendship Baptist Church Wednesday night Bible class. And again, I am your facilitator. It is a privilege and honor to share with you the lesson God has given me for this time and this moment. Tonight, we will be discussing the six types of liars identified by John. Again, the six types of liars identified by John. But before we begin, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the moment that you have given us. Thank you for the time that we have called to study your word in depth. Now, Lord, open up our hearts to hear and to feel and to keep your word. Open up our ears that we may listen to what you have to say. Open up our eyes, O oh God, that we may see you clearly today. Father God, we thank you for the man of God that will do what you have called him to do, and that is to deliver your word in the name of Jesus. Bless him and keep him in the name of Yeshua. Now, Lord, if there's any sin that will keep us from getting to you tonight, we ask that you forgive us in the name of Jesus. We have sinned today. We have sinned yesterday. God, thank you for your grace and your mercy. Now, Lord, allow us to not be a liar tonight. Allow us, O oh God, to come to you saying that we are unclean, we are unpure. But God, through you, O oh God, you have given us the right to the tree of life. So Lord, allow this lesson, O oh God, to touch the hearts of men that may not believe. And to those that believe, give them strength to keep on believing. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Our heart says, Amen. The first type of liar tonight comes from John chapter 1, verse 6. The first type of liar is people claiming to have fellowship with Jesus, but walk in darkness. Verse 6 says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Verse 7, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Verse 8, he was not that light but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh in the world. Jesus is the light. Darkness is sin. And the light and darkness cannot coexist. It does not go into the same place. Everyone that is in darkness, Jesus is trying to get out. And through that, we say that we love him and we have fellowship with him, but we still like to play in the dark. It is amazing to me that we serve the God of light and we say that we have fellowship with him. But in that, we must come out of the darkness because the darkness is only created for God to come help us and to bring us out. But you cannot say that you have fellowship with him and still try to play in the dark. When you allow the light to guide you, you won't fall into darkness. My brothers and sisters tonight, I want to help you understand that you are called to be the light of the world. You were called to be set apart. You were called to be separated. You were chosen by God to be a bright spot in a dark and gloomy world. But our problem is we don't know how to be the light because we like the darkness. And some of us will never understand the privilege and honor that we have to serve God until the light runs out. But I'm so glad that because I am a sinner, I need a savior. And when I mess up, he always comes and gets me. He may not come when I want him, but every time he's right on time. And in that, I give him praise and I give him glory because even when I was in darkness, he gave me two things that allowed me to come out and still hold my position, still hold my integrity, still hold my character. And it was grace and mercy. 
So I don't know about anybody tonight. I'm so glad that in my fellowship with him, I'm not a liar because I believe him and I understand on his word. But it was grace and mercy that allowed my darkness to leave me so that I could know the light. Hallelujah. Uh, the second type of liar is people who claim they have not sinned. Mm. People who claim they have not sinned. Verse 10 says, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Verse 11, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Hallelujah. Rejection of Christ is in fact a sin. Christ was in the world and the people rejected him as their creator. And serving God isn't popular. Can I say it again? Serving God isn't popular, but we must stop denying him for our friends, our family, and social status. Can I do a mass pause for somebody? Stop acting like God does not know when you are doing wrong or when you are doing wrong by him. Can I help you? God is tired of us saying that we love him and saying that we care for him and saying that we claim to be his Christians, claim to be his sons and daughters, but we have not come into the realization that we are sinners. Everyone that is in the body of Christ must have been or is a sinner. Can I help you? Stop acting like you did not sin. Stop acting like God did not save you from something. You cannot be a Christian and say, I did not sin. Because in fact, for him to be your savior, he saved you from something. And in that, you became a Christian. It was not because you got the right hand of fellowship. It was not because you were baptized. It was not because you went to Sunday school or Bible study or prayer meeting or to revive. Bible, you got saved from something. In fact, making him your personal savior. It was not until you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that he was God, that he became your savior. But before he ever became your personal savior, he saved you from something. And I don't know what he saved you from, but I'm so glad tonight that he saved you. He saved me when I was a wretch undone doing what I wanted to do, doing what I thought was good and fun and was going to make some prayer people happy because I wasn't in church. God pulled me out of what he pulled me out of so that I could be here tonight to tell you, stop lying. You are, in fact, a sinner. Sinning makes the relationship between you and God together. I'm not telling you to sin, but what I'm telling you is we have to stop acting perfect. The world has looked at the church through a microscope acting like we are the only people that are supposed to do well. And because it is the way we dress and the way we talk and the way we walk, people look at us and say, they have never done anything. You are wrong and stop doing that. Stop pinning your nose up to people because you too are alcoholic. You too are a drug addict. You too are having sex with people and doing all things that you want to do. You too had a baby out of wedlock. Stop acting like you were not a sinner. You are, in fact, a sinner saved, hallelujah, by his grace. Thank you, Jesus. I just make a mass pause and thank him because if it was not for him, if it was not for his saving power and his amazing grace and mercy, I too would have died in my sin. The third type of liar, people who claim to know Jesus but don't obey him. Uh, it's amazing to me, my brothers and sisters, John 14 and 21 says, he that have my commandments and keep them, he it is that loved me and he that loved me shall be loved of my father and I will love him. I will love him and will manifest myself in him. Uh, chapter 15, verse 10 says, if you keep my commandments, hallelujah, ye shall abide in my love. And even as I have kept my father's commandments, I abide in his love. I love 
the fact that Jesus says love equates to obedience. Love makes you do things that you don't always want to do, but because you love a person, you do it anyway. Jesus loved us so much that he followed his father's commandments and went to Calvary's cross to die for people he did not know. Hallelujah. Obeying Christ is more than words, but it is about commitment and conduct. Can I have a question for you tonight? What are you committed to? Because if you're really committed to God, then we wouldn't have to pump and bribe you to praise him. We wouldn't have to pump and bribe you to give him glory. Because what I love, I show it. Hallelujah. What I love, I commit to it. What I love, I give it all that I have within me. If you love him, why not obey him? He has given us instructions and directions on how to live this life. That we must live this life holy and acceptable unto him, our God. And we have yet to come to the realization that he understands it is rough, but he's asking us, just obey me. He said, if you keep my commandments, I will be with you. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I want to have your attention just for a little while and let you know he's waiting on us to obey him. Because when we obey him, we will have church like never before. When we obey him, he will come and show his hand to the world. When we obey the name of the Lord and obey his commandments, he will come and set the world on fire because we need him. Hallelujah. We need his holy power. We need his saving grace. We need his unconditional love. We need the Lord in this 21st century. And I know it's not sunny, but I'm so glad that even when I do wrong, he still loves me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when I've done wrong, even when I don't do right, even when I've sinned, he still loves me because when I've done wrong, I go back to the Lord and I say, Lord, forgive me for I am an unclean sinner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The fourth type of liar is people who claim to walk in light while hating their brothers and sisters. Verse chapter 2, verse 9, thank you, holy God. Thank you. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew which way it came. But the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse, chapter 4, verse 20. Chapter 4, verse 20. Hallelujah. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Stop saying you love Christ, but run in groups that are just like you. Christ made everyone different for a more diverse world. I don't care if you are black or white. I don't care if you are Hispanic or Asian. I don't care if you were born in the suburbs or the projects. God loves you. And the problem isn't that God doesn't love you. It's the fact that people on earth that say they love God hate you. It is so strange to me. That we serve the same God and we don't like each other. It is strange to me that we say we love God, but we cannot talk to one another. It is mind-boggling to me that we say we love God, but when our brother or sister are down, we don't lend a hand, but we reject them and talk about them later. How can you love a God 
that when a woman was at the well, thank you, Jesus, a Sumerian woman, a, 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 a Sumerian woman, <laughs> they were not supposed to talk to each other. She wasn't even supposed to be in the same room or the same conversation with a Jewish man. And he broke protocol because he said, I am God. And he said, I cannot say I love my father who's given me commandments to love everybody and not love you because you are different. Can I give a mass pause to somebody and not get excited on this Bible class? I'm so glad that God does not look at my color, but he looked at the heart that he gave me and he looked at me and said, I still can use a black boy. And aren't you glad that he looked beyond the color of your skin in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, but he looked at the content of your character. And in that, he saw that there was a purpose and there was a plan for your life. And aren't you glad that on this evening class that God looked beyond all that you've been through and all that you have done and he said I still can use you take hatred out of you take it out of you because you cannot love God because God is love you cannot love him you cannot love him you cannot love him and hate his people I don't care what they've done to you I don't care how much they talked about you love them anyway Love them. Love your drunken cousins. Love your homosexual friends. Hallelujah. I know y'all don't want to hear it, but you got to love who God has put on this earth because we were commanded to love them. Thank you, Jesus. You don't pick and choose who to love. You don't pick and choose who goes to heaven or hell. All you got to do is do what he told you to do. And that was to love everybody like Christ loves us. Thank you, Jesus. Stop lying and saying you walk with light and you got hatred in your heart. Stop lying, my brothers and sisters. The fifth type of liar. We almost done. We almost done. The fifth type of liar are people who say they love God, but really, whoo, but really love the world. Chapter 2, verse 15 says, Thank you, Jesus. And when he had made scrounds of small cords, he drew them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out of the changes money, and overthrew the tables stop playing in the middle either you're hot or you're cold you can't be look lukewarm or he will spit you out you cannot love God and still try to play in the world because if you're really chosen by God the world will still reject you Christians, believers of the cross, believers of his death and resurrection, we have to stop acting like we are not handpicked by God to do and be different. Stop playing in the world because God is tired of trying to mark you and you erase the mark. God have mercy. He is tired of us saying, God, I love you on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, I'm going to live in the world. But on Sunday, I'm going to give you two good hours of my life. And then after service, I'm going to go back home and do what I always do. He said, be ye transformed, hallelujah, by the renewing of your mind. Come from among them, my brothers and sisters. We have a work to do. And we cannot say we love God and we are called to do his will and called according to his purpose and still try to live as if we are not changed. I love the fact that we say we accepted God as our personal savior, but we have yet to change our ways. We have yet to change our lives for him. We have yet to be the image of God. Stop saying I made in his image and you don't act nothing like him. How can you say I love him? How can you say I'm created in his image and you don't speak to nobody? You're drinking and smoking. You're doing all that you want to do because you are human. But God said, be ye separated. Come out of it. Hallelujah. I, I, I got, I got Come out of it. 
He's drawing you closer. He wants you closer. The only problem is you think that you know how to handle it. And God said, that's fine if you want to handle it. But do not, I repeat, do not get so big and boastful of your own might because you are anointed or you are called. Because God said the same way I called you, I can deny you. Thank you, God. Christ, hallelujah, is a jealous God. He does not play second to anything. From your job, to your ministry, to your family, to your spouse, to your hobbies, he does not play second. God wants all of us. And the problem is we go to him and we sing songs. Lord, here I am to worship. I'm available to you. But we have limitations and we have restrictions on when he can use us. And God said, if I could not have all of you, then I don't want none of you. You either have to pick today if you're going to live for me or live for the world. Either you're going to pick the world or you're going to pick me. You cannot serve two masters. Choose ye this day. Who are you going to serve? Choose. Choose ye this day who you're going to serve. Who? Oh, hallelujah. We're getting out of here. The second type of liar, thank you, Jesus. The second type of liar, the, th the sixth, I'm sorry, the sixth type of liar is people who deny Jesus is the Christ. People who deny Jesus is the Christ. John chapter 2 verse 22 says, and when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. And they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. When he was talking about the temple being rebuilt in three days. Jesus prophesied his own death. Jesus is God wrapped in flesh. You cannot deny him because he has proven himself to be the Christ. He is the son, the only begotten son, hallelujah, of the living Savior. The Bible shows us count after count after count of who he is. And some still do not believe. Tonight I tell you that if you do not want to identify yourself as a liar, do yourself a favor and go to him and say, Lord, even if I did not say it out of my mouth, I'm sorry for lying on you. There's a lot of things that we have put God's name attached to. And it was not him in it. And God has sent me tonight to tell you all we have to stop lying on the name of our Savior. There's a lot of people doing all that they want to do and keep saying God's going to get the glory. God's going to bring me out of it. But we have put ourselves in some tough positions. God is coming back, my brothers and sisters. God is looking for us to stand boldly on the word of God. I know you sinned and grace and mercy is going to be applied. But stop doing what the Lord has told you is not pleasing unto him. Tonight, I have given you six types of liars. And I don't know about anybody else. I am one of these liars. I too am a sinner. But I'm so glad that he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. 
I pray that each and every person that watched this will feel that the Lord has given you another chance. Because my brothers and sisters, the Lord has given me and commissioned me to do his will. And tonight I tell you, just because you lied does not mean he does not love you. He loved you so much that he died on Calvary's cross to give you and I one more chance at life. Don't mess up your chance. Don't mess up your opportunity. Thank you for the time that we have spent together. So let us pray. Father God, thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for allowing your word to be brought to our attention. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to understand that we may have lied on your name, lied on our relationship with you, lied on our fellowship with you. We claim that we loved you, but still we did wrong by you. So Lord, forgive us. God, we ask that you would not only hear our words or hear our voices, oh God, but search our hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Search us, oh God, if there's anything that is in us, oh God, that is making this prayer unvalid or, or making this prayer unpure. Father God, I decree and declare you are pulling it out of us tonight. Yes, God, pull out sin and pour out darkness. Pull out every piece of hatred and jealousy. Pull out those things, oh God, that is keeping us from you. In the name of Yeshua. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for the time that we have spent with you. Now, Lord, until we meet you again, bless us and keep us. Hold us and love us. Keep us in the bosom, oh God, of your lovely son. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Our hearts and our minds, our soul says, amen. See you real soon. God bless you.